honestly, that was so exhausting. It. I gotta be honest with you guys. It was literally the night after uh, my friends and I had another long night of fun, and that went on until midnight. And this show, midnight basically, Full Gear 2021 has outdone everything, just about everything again. The beauty of AEW continues. Every pay per view desperately tries. Uh, you know, I shouldn't even say desperately tries to outdo the others, and this one is up there for the big debates. What a ride. I cannot wait to get into this, but I'm exhausted. My voice, I'm amazed to even give you guys a voice right now. I'll level with you. Like, the fact that I can hear what I'm saying still is a miracle to me. That's how much I enjoyed the pay-per-view. That's how much I hope you guys enjoyed the pay-per-view if you saw it. If you didn't, I strongly recommend you dedicate some time to watch some of, at least some of, AEW Full Gear 2021. What's going on? It's your boy here, Apollo, from Down Down Up Up. This is my results and review video for the show. Let's jump in. So, our little uh, tidbits of surprise. Um, I actually don't remember finding out who it was. Orange Cassidy's partner against, um, I believe, uh, House Hardy next week, I think. It was such a small announcement during the show, so I hate to say it, I'm starting off with something I actually just can't remember, because there's so much awesomeness going on already. But bottom line, uh, Orange Cassidy is teaming up with a member of Chaos from New Japan, and that's going to be cool when we get to that. I just cannot for the life of me remember who it was. But, news! Great start, great start, I know. I'm, I'm on the ball with this, aren't I? I'm amazed I'm even talking to you guys right now. But, a surprise that I do remember... Jay Lethal is an AEW. That was kind of cool. It literally got announced before the main event, and he is challenging Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship on the next Dynamite. Didn't see that one coming. I actually thought this show was clear of any kind of surprise, debuts, returns, etc., etc. But Jay Lethal showed up, and that was a nice surprise, and this theme reeked of Macho Man, and I'm very much looking forward to him in AEW. That was nice to see. It's been a while since I've followed him anywhere. Uh, I'm not the big Ring of Honor guy, so glad to have him. Now let's try to jump in the show. Women's tag in the buy-in. Actually, I guess there was another thing in the buy-in. I can't really keep going because little things, right? Little things. Um, Dante Martin got introduced, uh, apparently to his home crowd enough feel um, we knew that Team Taz had made an offer to him on Rampage, and they were up in the skybox watching on, but then the Acclaimed came out, threw out some bars, by the way, I'm a big Acclaimed fan, I love it when they come out, I love it when they speak, it just pops me every single time, it does it for me, and made the offer for Dante to join them, and Dante just shooed them away, and that was just a nice little segment to start the day, that's all, but at the same time, uh, Leo Rush was away for a bit, apparently the death of his grandmother, so... My uh, condolences to Mr. Rush, and he will be back, I believe, to tag with Dante this coming Dynamite, so that's good to hear. Um, now we get into the buy-in, uh, the actual match on the buy-in. I can hear my voice cracking already. Um, women's tag. Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa taking on Nyla Rose and uh, Jamie Hayter. It was good, actually. Um, for the last little bit... It was a real tease that the heels were going to win, which was going to be a little bit of a surprise to me. Serena Deeb was uh, outside, and there was a bit of a distraction and a cheap shot to Hikaru Shida. Uh, I believe Vicky Guerrero hit her with her stick, and that was very amusing, but gave it some time. Uh, Babyfaces came back after Nyla hit a big splash on Hikaru Shida, but Thunder broke it up. Shenanigans, a lovely roll-up from Shida on Nyla Rose, and the faces took it with that said move. Nice little way to start the day. Getting into the main card now. A surprise starter, in my opinion. I thought this would at least be in the middle of the card. Uh, MJF and Darby Allen started the night. And they did not hold back. That is up there for match of the night. Um, from what I remember, again, it was such a big show. It's so hard for me to do these videos after, but I love it. My first impressions are usually the best of things. There was a tombstone pile driver on the ring apron. 
I don't really know if I need to say anymore. Uh, some of the counters in the match were also just bonkers to the wall. Ridiculous. I believe Darby was going for Ace of Spades, a.k.a. Code Red. MJF turns that into a devastating powerbomb. That was fantastic. Um, Sting was there to make sure that Wardlow and Spears didn't interfere, so that was good. Um, and those those two really just crushed it. They crushed it. I can't really give much more props other than they just absolutely crushed it. This was as good as I thought it would be. I knew this was going to be something. And the finish was up for debate. I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad I picked MJF because what did we get? Well, he teased Darby with the skateboard saying, hit me. It was sort of like a Bray Wyatt, John Cena moment from WrestleMania 30. And of course, Darby didn't do it. But what did he do? He kind of gave it to the referee and gave MJF a chance for a cheap shot. And I was thinking low blow, but here's the funny thing. The whole night, the whole, well, the whole night, the whole match, I noticed MJF fiddling with his trunks. And, like, we were just sort of making the jokes, like, oh, what if he's got brass knucks in there, or are his trunks loose or something? No, 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 no. I immediately knew what was going on, and it was, I guess, the dynamite diamond ring. A cheap shot to Darby, and what does he do after that? He beats him with the side headlock takedown. And, oh my gosh, it was a peace de resistance dick move. But, uh, as much as I hate to say it, there's the big win that's going to push him finally towards some, like, credibility these days in AEW. <laughs> and we'll see where that goes. I don't really think this hurts Darby at all. It wasn't clean. And I don't think a lot of people were expecting it to be clean. But I was thinking this would be a good candidate for a roll-up. But that, that was even better. So... That's a win for MJF, and thank God it started the show, because I just cannot stand that bum. But he does a great job. He makes me hate him. That's what his character's supposed to do. So, good stuff. Next up, tag team title match. FTR, Lucha Bros. This had some great heat. Oh my gosh, we knew this was going to be good. We knew this was going to be good. Um, but I hate to say it. It was this match that started suffering from the show cutting. Like, they were freezing uh, when I was watching it, and I just could not for the life of me stand it. Uh, see, like, that's sort of what I'm talking about. It froze during the most awkward of times, especially when Lucha Bros were about to hit their finish, um, which I believe they did. I saw a Fear Factor hit, but it was not the end of it. I'm not sure if it was an assisted one. Before that, the match was fantastic. And then I'm not really sure about the actual finish. I don't know if I missed something or not. FTR went under the ring and put their green masks on. And then uh, I believe Dax got back in the ring. No, it was Cash. Cash got back in the ring and then just got hit with a fear factor. And then that was it. And um, um, Axe was just on the outside. And in his mask on the ground, and I just didn't get it. Just didn't get it. Like, I'm trying to picture it again in my mind, but it was very odd, confusing. But um, the match overall, though, was great. I knew it was going to be great, and I am glad the Lucha Bros retained. So we did come out of it with the right winners. Life goes on. Apparently, they're scheduled to meet in AAA for uh, FTR's tag title, so maybe Lucha Bros are getting all the gold back, or FTR are really pushing those in that company now. We'll see what we get. We'll see what we get. But overall, match was good. Ending was a bit... I'm not sure what that was. Next up, though, ooh, this was one of the gambles. Miro Danielson. It could have gone either way, and it was great. It was really good. They built off each other so well. Miro with the clear strength advantage and just wanted Brian to take shots at him. Absolutely gave him the chance. He just had his hands up, hitting his side, just kick me, kick me, you fool. And Danielson's doing his best trying to hang in there for Miro's power. I do not know for the life of me how he escaped the game over, not once, but twice. And, oh man, if there was one thing that bothered me, it's that Miro had one of his uh, legs taped up um, around the thigh. But Danielson did not target it. Maybe it was a legitimate side injury nagging him that required tape. I'm not really sure about the gist of it, but I thought for sure that was going to be something on Danielson's target list. It was not. We saw the submission attempts, but Miro just wasn't going away. But it took something big, and big this was. A DDT off the top rope, a swinging DDT off the top rope, and then immediately Danielson locks in the guillotine, and Miro's out, the referee rings the bell, Brian Danielson wins the tournament.
Not a surprise, a great match. I gambled a little bit too heavy on that one, but I was happy to see a good match and a good finish, honestly. I did not want Miro to tap, and a pass out is definitely the right call in that scenario. So we'll see how Brian Danielson does finally getting a world championship match. Now, considering who the champion is, I do not think Danielson will be taking the belt, but never say never. Ever say never. And speaking of never say never, that is how I feel after making my pick for the next match. Falls count anywhere? Three on three, Jurassic Express and Christian Cage taking on the super click. And oh man, match of the night. I gotta say it, match of the night. This was one of the most creative Falls Count Anywheres I've seen that kept it in the vicinity of the arena. We didn't go backstage and out in the street or anything like that. We didn't go to the kitchens this time, but they had a ball with each other. Tables, chairs, oh my god, what what was it? Knee pads with thumbtacks? They were insane! The, every spot was just so on point that... To describe this match in detail would be devaluing it. If you're going to watch one match from this show, watch the Falls Count Anywhere six-man tag. It was a blast. And so was the finish. I thought once those thumbtacks came out, my chances of seeing a happy ending were done. And I really thought this was the right time for it. But no, it, the pin got broken up. Um, Luchasaurus made sure to send a bunch of fools off the stage, including Cutler and Nakazawa, who were just a pain in the butt for a small majority of this. But all of a sudden, Matt Jackson was on his own on the stage. Uh, Luchasaurus also did like a shooting star press off of the stage into the bums. It was unbelievable. I forgot he could do that. He maybe have done that before against Wardlow. Or that was completely new, and I can buy that it was completely new. It was insane. Christian's look like looking like he's going to give a concerto to Matt Jackson. And for just a split second, the way the camera was hitting, I thought he was going to hit Jungle Boy. You just never know when things are going to happen in wrestling. But no, he gave the chair to Jungle Boy. He teased this earlier in the match when Cole was down again for a concerto. But Jungle Boy took it. He smacked the hell out of Jackson's head with it. And one, two, three. The good guys win. Jungle Boy gets a huge pay-per-view moment. Luchasaurus is up there joining the fun, and Christian Cage finally gets a pay-per-view win in AEW. That felt good. Very fun match. Very glad I went with the good guys in that scenario. And the way things go, this was a night that the Bucks needed to be hurt, a night that Adam Cole needed to be hurt, and I'm glad they went all the way with it. Very happy to see it that next up one of the matches that swerved me um but to be fair i think you could flip a coin on uh cody and Pac versus andrade and malachi black this was a fun match though uh besides the fact that i believe both teams were just tagging in each other and pissing off the legal man I, I wasn't surprised to see it on Cody and Pac's side, but I was surprised to see it on Malachi and Andrade's side. Considering they've recently just gotten together, you would think they'd put the pettiness aside, but apparently not. But again, the match was lovely. Absolutely lovely. I believe at one point there was a figure four on Andrade, and Pac hit the black arrow. If he didn't, I apologize. That was another one of the streaming cuts, so piss me off. But in the end... Cody was able to take out Black, and Pac was able to hit the Black Arrow on Andrade, and the good guys won it. Didn't expect that, honestly. But again, I feel like it was a toss of the coin, and it was nice to see Pac get some good do out of it. The shame is, though, that Andrade's pay-per-view match uh, with Pac got shafted from last month, and this is Black's first, and considering how over Black is right now, I didn't want to see them lose this one, so it hit me a little bit in the brain, but with the quality we got, I'm not going to complain. Rhyming accidentally bars all that. Um, another side note, the crowd was just booing Cody like crazy, and that's just getting funnier and funnier to watch if you just have a sense of humor and enjoy wrestling. So, yeah, basically the gist of that. I think I'm still going in the order of all this, too. I'm really impressed I haven't had to look at my phone um, so, well, how many have we done so far? We did the kickoff, we did MJF Derby, we did the tag, we did the, uh, Eliminator Tournament Finals, 
Um, we did the false count anywhere. We just did the tag match. So we have four left. And I actually have all of them in my head in order. I think we're great. All right, let's go. Women's championship match. Ty Conti, Britt Baker. This was a lot more than I expected in the resiliency department. And I think it really put Ty over. Because she got curb stomped once in the ring. She got curb stomped on the stairs. She got curb stomped again in the ring. And that didn't do it. That did not do it. She was a fighting spirit that night. I give her credit. And she was darn close. Oh my God, if there's just one piece of disappointment is she when she finally got her DD tie, I did not hear a sound from that crowd. They were exhausted and I hate to see the women's match suffer from that. But it was a good match and Britt could not beat her definitively because she kept going for Lockjaw, but then roles were happening and unfortunately the one that ended the match benefited Miss Baker and she retained the women's championship. Great try, Ty. Great try. If if you weren't solidified already on that roster, you are now. It was a great little match for you two. Love to see it. Also love to see CM Punk, Eddie Kingston. That was violent. If I didn't mention it before, we got some heavy blood from Adam Cole earlier in the night. Well, we got more in this one from CM Punk. And it was just so damn physical. I think for some of the hardcore fans, this may have been match of the night, and I can see why. It was a lot. But literally before the bell rings, Kingston get his backhand on Punk. That was hilarious, and he's laughing it off. The crowd seemed 50-50, and I think near the end, it was actually pro-Kingston over Punk. That's not a surprise, but I could not for the life of me see Punk really turning heel and doing like a double turn for this match at one point it looked like it but it kind of just got shrugged off um oh my gosh we got the go to sleep but they were just so exhausted that nothing could happen out of it kingston even teased he was going for it didn't happen and finally punk gets it for the second time one two three over some booze but then Life goes on, a handshake was offered, Kingston didn't care, did the same thing with Danielson, just left the ring, pushed the cameraman out of the way, and kept walking. Whew, man, this was fun. It had more potential, honestly, than the ending of the match gave credit to, but a lovely kerfuffle, and hopefully if there is any heat between those two left, it's gone now, because that was great. You guys crushed it, and I feel like a lot of people are back in that. Now, um, yeah, if there was one miss of the night, and I really hate saying miss, I, I'm, I'm going to have to do it. I am going to have to do it. Um, like, this debatably is why this pay-per-view did not outdo All Out. The five-on-five -five Minneapolis street fight um, between the Inner Circle and American Top Team and... Um, Good lord, I've already forgotten the name of the other group. But honestly, couldn't care less. Uh, it's a street fight, and we started with a tag team match. That is such a rookie mistake. At first, I was thinking it was because I had my hopes up high. This is not going to be a kerfuffle around the ring and arena with random weapons. But then it turned into that for the majority of the match, and it got better. And I'm just thinking to myself, why did we waste time starting with this tag crap? Why? 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 I, I despise it with a passion when we have a build version of a street fight on sanction match, anything among those lines, and we start tagging. I hate that in wrestling. That's one of my pet peeves. Take another match. Let's go back, way back to 1998 at In Your House. I believe it was the February In Your House in 1998. No Way Out, I believe. And we had a eight-man unsanctioned match, eight-man tag, and we tag for the majority of it. It was so furiating why we couldn't just get a brawl. This felt like it, but when we got to the brawling, it did get good. Hager found a toaster, and that was most of the comedy for me in that match. Um, Sammy Guevara's jumping off of ropes and ladders like a maniac. And then finally, yes, the old bum, Dan Lambert, got his due. Jericho gave him some chops. He beat him up with a stick. He, uh, I believe, um, got a stapler and got him in the wee-wee. And that was hysterical. And then we got a little emotional. Because one thing that I oddly forgot about, and I guess I'll break the review to just tell you guys something. 
Um, for those who weren't aware, I believe uh, yesterday was the day Eddie Guerrero left us from this world. I did not know that before watching the show and getting to the Eddie Guerrero spots, and there were a few. I believe it was tributed in the FTR Lucha Bros match, definitely in the um, match I'm just describing, the Minneapolis Street Fight. I know FTR and the Lucha Bros were playing around with that. Um, there was one other match, for the life of me, I cannot remember which one. Where the, uh, Yeah, I believe Andrade. Yeah, Andrade was doing it too. And then, yes, we had a little spot of it with... Um, God, it was. I think it was Jericho? Pretty sure it was Jericho in the five-on-five -five street fight. But here's the funny thing. As I said, I didn't know this before getting into the show, that this was Eddie's day. I don't know why. I just had a feeling... Before the show started, I was just sitting around on my phone. I just wanted to watch Eddie Guerrero win the WWE title. I watched that clip, and then I wanted to watch his championship entrance on SmackDown. I was just enjoying myself. And then we start the show, and I find it out, and I'm like, that is so weird. That is so weird, because like I said, I didn't remember. I did not remember how or what day this was more specifically. But I felt like I wanted to watch Eddie Guerrero's shining moments. That was one of those weird moments in a life where it's just, how does it match up so well with how everybody else is feeling right now because of the obvious? So just wanted to share that with you guys. That was pretty cool. But then we get to the end of the match, and yes, Lambert got a little bit of a beating. And then of all things, Jericho beats him with a frog splash. I thought for sure we'd get a submission, but this was more for Eddie. Jericho looked up at the sky, at least said I love you four or five times. And we got the nice ending of Inner Circle winning, getting back on the grind, and right decisions were made. But did the star of this show bring me down, a, uh, star of this match bring me down a bit? Yes, because I'm honest. I'm honest about everything. This did not do it for me as much as I was hoping. Then we got to the good stuff. Things got made up for it, but then a little bit more down because the old bum did not get the full extent of what he deserves. You do not have a loud mouth like that spell off on the amount of TV time that he had. And then just give him that. That is like a small taste of what I want to come. So, gotta throw that out. A swing and a miss when it comes to punishing that pleb. But... You can put all of that negativity aside because then we got to the main event. It wasn't going to happen. Hangman Adam Page, Kenny Omega. World Championship, was this a shining moment? Well, it sure had an emotional start. We got a cut to the streets outside and Dark Order seemingly are running to get there from another building. And Page is walking the streets on his horse. And we've got some Trons passing by. Um, one of them more specifically... Page promising to win the championship when it was vacant and being created, but Jericho was the one who obviously got that one, and then we're getting closer and closer to him there. The crowd was going crazy enough for it, booing Kenny enough for it, and the match itself was pretty darn good. I gotta be honest again, though, it didn't matter much in the long run. This match was not as good as I thought it was going to be. So there's some interesting throw out for you guys. I don't know how you feel, but I like to share my opinions. And if you agree with me, feel free to let me know. I expected more from this. That's the funny thing. I really thought this was going to be crazier still. Because after the waiting, I just expected a crazy match with some crazy moments. One in particular, I'm amazed we did not get. But we will get to it. We will get to it. It doesn't bring anything down. Just a little bit for me. That's all. So, if there was one annoyance, is that Callus was at ringside. And he was being just about as annoying as possible. And thankfully, he did get knocked the heck out later. It was nice to see finally someone really punch him right in the face. But, oh boy. Did they crush it in some opening bits? The stiff knees, man. The freaking um, avalanche falls. Uh, man, what's it called? Now now you're losing me. Uh, avalanche, last call from the top rope. Lovey. Love to see it. Love to see it. And, oh, man, I'm just trying to think of some of the bigger spots. But, again, it, it really just came down to the last little bit for me emotion-wise. So we're getting into some big stuff. We, we've teased the Buckshot Lariat and uh, One Wing Angel multiple times. So 
one time later in the match, it looked like Kenny was about to hit. And I'm thinking, okay, this is it. I, I, I've said it. I've said it to a lot of people. I need to see Paige kick out of this. Paige gets out of it and hits his own version of a one-wing angel. And Omega kicks out of it. That blew my mind. I, it felt so strange to know I was right. We were going to see this move hit and kicked out of. I needed to see that in this match, but the roles reversed. Oh, so close. I really thought we'd see Paige kick out of that and get a crazy pop that would bring this match to a new level. But Kenny kicks out of it. Because of course he did. It's his move. So I'm not going to dispute that, but man, that got nuts. And then we get to the finish. Okay, Omega's clearly out on his feet at this point, but here come the Bucks. And honestly, I was surprised to see Matt walking after the concerto. But they're both limping. And what are they going to do? Well, they both took one side of the ring each and just stared at Paige, seemingly accepting this moment, nodding towards him. Like when Paige apologized on Rampage, he really meant it that there's no more beef with them. Or even, just don't ruin this for me. Paige hit a buckshot lariat to Omega's back. When Nick looked at him, went to the other side, Matt looks at him, even a more sincere nod of approval. Another buckshot lariat. One, two, and three, and finally, I'm half proud to say this, uh, Hangman Adam Page, world champion in AEW. Dark Order came out to celebrate with him. The crowd could not have been more happier, and on all days of Eddie Guerrero's passing, we get to see a serious underdog get his limelight. His shining moment. That was a piece de resistance. Again, match could have been better, in my opinion. Did it ruin the moment? Of course not. Of course not. And maybe it was for the best because that crowd may have been way more exhausted than I would have guessed. But a lot of them certainly came to see Adam Page and probably would have woken up for anything we would have given them in this match. But overall, that's full gear. A fun, wild ride of a show and delivered on more than I could have expected in most departments. But the perfect wrestling show is so hard to get. I, I think we've given All Out this year enough credit for being it. Full Gear repeating that kind of performance would have been crazy. Did it outdo it? That's up for debate. Honestly, with Paige winning the championship, I know a lot of people are on their high spirits right now, including myself, including one of my buddies. Really up there. Like, for one of my buddies, I have not seen this person get so excited for a moment in wrestling in a long time for something like this. So, possibly ever. That's how big this was. But, I thank you so much for tuning in if you're still here. I know we've hit more than 20 minutes on this video. Hope you all have a lovely day. Take it easy. I won't be long before you'll be seeing me again. Survivor Series is only next weekend, but when it comes to hype, it doesn't get more hype than this show. We'll see you guys another time. Have a great one. Keep it real.